wanted. That would be, I would recommend maybe applying for one of our TAC grants for the, the HD 101 classes. Okay. Yeah, I want to tag on that. Really yeah, cool. okay. So yeah, those would, we just finished that, that, Sorry, that piece. No, no, don't worry about it. That's fine. why we're recording. It's, it's here and we, we sent this out by email this morning, how they did. Yeah. So we have it here, but talk with us today. I'm happy to sit down and talk with you because I think that it would be great. Yeah. It would lend okay. itself to that. And this is internal money through Mount Hood that will be awarded. Yeah. Both for HD 100 and industrial. So we've got two yeah. grant programs that we're talking about this morning. The TAP grants, internal to Mount Hood, they are, we're not putting any limits on the subject matter for that. Right. The HEC grant that's coming from the state, there are lots of limits. Mm -hmm. of state, course. You know. right. yeah. But you know what, the, the great thing is that the state actually allocated money for this. I mean, yeah. that's huge. Yeah. That's a wonderful, positive thing. And Oregon actually is ahead of the game on a national level. Um, or we're in the beginning, or we're, we're in the lead, nationally speaking. Are there any CTE? Because that, that, that seems more of general requirements. Are there any career technical um, classes? No, largely because this grant is for all state institutions throughout Oregon, which has a ton of, a lot of universities, right? Okay. So it's balancing out um, oh, the grad it's students. Oh, university, right. Yeah, yeah. transfer yeah. stuff, okay. Yeah, so, you know. Well, we need a CTE grant, just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> TAP grants, TAP grants, yeah, yeah. So we can talk later. Yeah. And, and yeah, there is money. Um, so, yeah, so what we're looking for for these grants is basically just a, for the HEC grant is an expression of interest and then um, if you, if anyone's interested, then please get in touch with us as soon as possible because we are formulating the application right now. Actually, I would say today, uh, <laughs> you know, not to put any pressure in, but if you're even thinking about it, if you're yeah. just thinking about it, Andy, if you're thinking, yeah. I want to do business. Well, we, I'm, I'm the lead teacher for BA 101, so I'll, put my, I'll put my hat in the ring. Great, right, you're right. in. Now, we have right, a $70 right. textbook, we currently use, so that's, right. that's the, that's the kind of interesting contrast. Drive below that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we have a call tomorrow with the call quality. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the sure. reason why I say or today better. is because Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you we were already trying. I know, I know, I know. Without without yeah. without being signed uh, official. Yeah, and and, and I'll so. I'll make this point right now, especially because this is being um, being recorded for everybody. So um, just because what we're focusing on today is open educational resources. That doesn't mean that we, uh, Thank we, you so much. we still appreciate all the other efforts faculty have been making to make your course text as low cost as possible, right? Like, so, you know, textbook affordability is the goal um, for our students, but um, an OER is just one way to do it. You can also do it through um, adopting library resources and you've got librarians that are here to help you integrate find those resources and integrate them into your courses or help, you know, you, you would do the implementation, obviously, but, um, you know, we'll help you with that. Because those are already paid for. Already paid for by students. By students. Yeah, so it's a bit, it's a bigger bang for their buck if um, instructors use some library resources in their For our visual learning students, it's a boon. Yes, yeah. So what Somehow the textbook I doesn't seem so do overwhelming when it's online. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you. <laughs> what I'm interested in is, is what the purchasing process is for the library. I've been here long enough where um, I have a couple different examples of how that's worked, and I'm sort of out in limbo. I don't know how to get my requests through, and I don't know how to oh. make those priorities so that the library actually holds the materials that would be available. So to we we've got. We've got a very detailed answer for you on that, and I apologize that it's not self-explanatory, obviously. Um, so let's talk after this session. Um, but real quick, we've got a link on our website. It's it's kind of hard to find, okay. um, where you can always submit things. We've got our primary collection development librarian, which is Stephanie Dubner. She's a faculty librarian. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, talk to Stephanie about the collection, okay? Um, and then we have um, different librarians that are assigned to different subject areas. That purchase for each subject area. Okay. So that's that's in a nutshell. Okay. Um, so I, I need to identify those librarians. Yeah, or just okay. start with Stephanie. And there's Stephanie. a process to put those on reserve. It's um, kind of term by term, so that might be where some of your questions are too, to put them on reserve. And your main contact for that is our director. Megan. Yeah, Megan. Okay. So to put to hold those. 
for your classes and for your students. Once we acquire, Once we acquire them. them. Right. 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 So there's the request part and then the reserves part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is, okay. is Stephanie going to be here during the summer? No. But I will. You will. I will. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So I'll talk know. to you after the yeah, talk to you. Can <laughs> we use some of the TOT or the HEC money to um, purchase for the library if the library funding is limited? So, not the heck, uh, not the heck money, but that would probably, you could put together a proposal in the program support category of the TAP grants. Um, program support proposed some other project that directly supports the OER program and textbook affordability initiatives in general at the college. So, so that's a possibility. Okay. You would just need to um, craft your proposal in a way that would um, be in compliance with uh, all, everything the that we talked about right. in the first half. No, no, um, it's but, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but we, I did it. Okay, and I sent an email out. You should have an email for okay. um, with the RFP attached and um, okay. all the information. Just and again, just uh, we can talk again. Tomorrow. Yeah, I've, I've done micro grants, I've done mini grants. Um, sure. So I have a little bit of time to get this done. Yeah. So there are parameters. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think probably one of the most important points about the heck money is that let's say that we've got five to ten faculty here at the college that want to apply for the heck grants. Mount Hood is only supposed to submit one application for that, that encompasses everybody at Mount Hood that wants to go for the heck money. Um, so that's why it needs to be a real coordinated effort. Um, so yeah. And the timeline is tight. Really tight. It's yes. now. We're doing it right now. Yeah. I mean, we didn't get a lot of. I mean, I think that's first. We didn't get a lot of lead time mm -hmm. on the heck money, but so that's why we're combining that with our internal grant here, and then mm -hmm. moving forward. So, for example, we're looking at Math 111 right now, and we're going to use that for the the heck grant. Andy, if you're in, we could, you know, you, we would add you to that. And any other faculty from Mount Hood, we batch it together and then mm -hmm. send one grant off. And you can probably. I bet just the process of engaging the grant application will help you think through exactly what you want to do. And, and we'll help you. And again, our grant writers, they're really good at asking the facilitating questions to get us thinking about the right things. So, from, uh, I, I guess, throwing my head in means there's some back end things that I'll have to engage in. How, who will reach out to me or I need to find somebody? I'll reach out to you. Okay. I'll reach out to you. Okay, yeah. right. We will reach but out to I, you. I wanna, we've heard this message. Because we are working with Elysian and they are writing the grant, really the pressure is not on faculty to write the grant. All we really need is some back-end information about your course, the cost of textbook, the impact that it would have, and maybe just a description of your course to start with. There might be some follow-up questions that the grant writers have, and we can funnel that through and, and make sure we get those. But it shouldn't be, I don't want faculty to feel like this, oh my gosh, this is too overwhelming, it's way too much. Yeah, that's what the grant writers. So who is grant. actually writing the grant, David? The Lucian. They're professional grant writers. writers. Oh. They actually okay. reside in Texas. <laughs> so they're, yeah, they're these these lovely ladies with very heavy southern accents, <laughs> <laughs> but they're really sharp and they're Texas really. I really. Southern. Texas yeah, Southern. I grew up in Texas. A Texas Southern. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a real twine. I grew up in Louisiana, and you're yes, right. It's, it's not the thing. same. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real twine. So, so that's the, right. the fact that that's the right. fact that uh, we have a Louisiana um, is a, a huge show of support from our college administration because the college has agreed to hire them to do this mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for faculty to make life easier. So we've got administrative support. We've got money. Um, we've got grant opportunities. So we want to jump on it and not lose it is the yeah. message I'm getting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we have a lot of students, so the impact we could have mm -hmm. is really significant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing about the, the HEC grant is that they are um, going to, uh, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say they're going to prioritize, but they are going to, they are going to weigh um, collaborative projects um, with faculty at multiple institutions, right? So if, um, what institution are you from? I'm at Portland State. The Portland State, okay. I'm, I'm doing a grant project with the people at Clackamas Community College. So that's one perfect example. If you wanted to team up with somebody here at Mount Hood yeah. for one of these tech grants, then let us know. 
And we've got the grant writers, so you can just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I know one idea that um, uh, was thrown out was maybe we could, when they pave um, transfer pathways, all with OER curriculum. I would love to talk to you about that. I work with the I work with the Office of Equity Innovation at PSU. Okay. And um, I'm bringing OER to my. Okay. Role. Okay. So we <laughs> so should definitely talk. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Lindsay Patino. This is our ASU Vice President. Hi, thanks for coming. Integral in the planning of this, this festival today for OER. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like you come bearing gifts. I do. Okay. I didn't know what you bring, so I, I brought a few, and I have more if we need them. But um, I have shirts and buttons. We made, we made over 100 buttons, and we got over 200 OER shirts for everybody today who comes to the festival, all the activities. So I, I have plenty of stuff. I'm really excited. So as a part-time employee, this is interesting, your work with Clackamas. Um, you know, since I have a foot in both doors, mm -hmm. I mean, is that a type, I mean, can I maximize that? Because I'm teaching. Because you're from two institutions. Right? I don't know if you would. I, I think it would be your proposal. It's the proposal. Um, if, if you propose to do some sort of um, OER project that where, where your where your the work produced would be used at both institutions that would it, that would have a greater impact on the number of students. So then, yeah, that would be more competitive. Yeah, I don't think you need another person, right? Like you probably you yourself could probably stand as the collaboration between the two institutions, right. probably. Yeah, then we could just you know write the, the grant to really express that express that intent. I'll be back. I'm gonna bring some more shirts. Okay. Does anybody um <coughs> what's the size of mediums? Medium large, medium large. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got some small stuff. Okay. I'll be back. Thank you. Okay. I'll be back. So ASG has been just one of the most amazing parts of working on the project here. They, I mean, they have just provided such a groundswell of support and enthusiasm and energy. And they've got a budget to produce flyers and t-shirts and buttons and stuff like that. And um, yeah, yeah. Something like engaging students and student-centered projects. Mm -hmm. It's great. Also, we are currently, or I should say ASG is currently running a survey of students right now. We worked with Tim Green and Sergey in research and planning. Um, and we're surveying the, stu the student perspective on how textbook affordability or the cost of textbooks impacts enrollment, retention, and completion. Mm -hmm. um, because that one of our goals for the textbook affordability team in general is to get some real data mm -hmm. um, so that we can you know, really make a case for, so that we can measure the success of, of our textbook affordability initiatives before, during, and after implementation. So how is, you know, one thing that I've run into, because um, how is it, I'm just wondering from the grant perspective, as you're familiar with it, is it possible that we could buy like a classroom set of books and like have those available to our students as opposed to the students having to buy um, books? You know, so, I mean, I'm just, again, I'm coming from CTE, possible. so we've got real specialized needs here, but sure. it's been a real frustration. You know, one of the books that we need, I mean, my the textbooks and machine tool are over $700. Whoa, you know, yeah, I mean, they're so specialized. Yeah, and so that's why I'm really asking. It's like there's, wow. there's. That's going to impact so enrollment. That's <laughs> great. Right. Well, we're we're busting at the seams. I mean, the other thing that's frustrating for us is that unlike the rest of the college, with respect, we are at 100 percent. We we are at 100 percent enrollment. So yeah. even, not, with, even with even seven hundred dollar yeah. textbooks. Yeah. So. Um, but it's been really frustrating. It's like, oh no, we can't, we can't have a classroom set of these $175 books. Um, so there was already a faculty member with that same question that just came to me last week from Automotive and said, hey, is it possible that we could buy a set, but we will take care of it in-house and check them out to students? So here's the good news, bad news. Good news, I always wanna say yes. Why not apply? Like, because that's going to be helpful for textbook affordability, right? Mm -hmm. Do it. Grants. The downside, which he brought up, and we all know, is that that will be a short-term solution. It will work for a while, but you know.
You can also put those books, I would encourage you to put them on reserve in the library instead of leaving them in the department as well. Um, because we're already set up with the, the computer system too, and, and all the students need it for who's got which books. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, that's a great yeah. utilitarian but resource that's a, that's for that. A, but this might be a prime subject area to investigate creation of OER, right? So you have to be careful of the copyrighted material in these in these textbooks, right? But the people who are teaching this stuff. If you just started putting down your knowledge and created your own course materials, put an open license on it, then you undercut that entire publisher's market and you're saving students money. So that's the idea behind um, creation of OER materials. And it, I mean, it's not, that's an oversimplification, um, but it's very possible um, as long as the faculty are. Well, you know, I was you were looking at reference materials. I mean, anatomy and physiology, I mean, that's not changing. You know, these are just reference sure. materials. Sure, but there's an OpenStax anatomy and physiology, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is. yeah. Um, well, from that standpoint, though, what I'm wondering in your machine tools course, is, is it a reference that students need to take with them to their first job? So in that sense, if that was the case, then a classroom set doesn't help them because they have to return it. Right, and then they don't have it in their personal library. So if it's important for students to actually have a copy of it, then yeah, creating open content that they can retain becomes important. But if it's something where it's like, no, once you've internalized and integrated this, um, you know, I'm a working professional and I don't look at my textbooks anymore, you know, after graduation, then in that case, a classroom set might be a very good affordability. Yeah, solution. you know, we've got six terms of textbooks to go over, so it's a bigger discussion. Yeah. Anyway, just to sort of throw that in the mix right. yeah. mm -hmm. as a consideration. Right. I would say, though, why not? Yeah. Put together a proposal for the TAC grants, and we can talk about it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know there are certainly groups of people working on um, OER and, you know, um, for classes. I was just wondering if, if anybody at Mount Hood is using OER yes. materials right now. I, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we've got 15 people currently working on Open Oregon Grants, mm -hmm. and do you use OER? I use OER, yeah. yeah. You can look on the resources page and filter by Mount Hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. Nice. 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 the answer to that one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just say, too, that part of OER that's really exciting to me is like the pedagogical aspect of it, that it really, there's an opportunity to get students more involved in the, the compilation and curation of the information that they're consuming, you know? And so they buy into it more, they they get to keep it, and um, yeah, there, there are just a lot of impl important implications around that that uh, traditional textbooks don't provide at all. So you think at Portland State you might actually pull together a student group to help teachers choose the materials that's in their textbooks? Now? Well, that's what David Wiley does. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's, a, he's with... Um, Women. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I got the L. I couldn't remember the rest of it. Uh, we have one up there, but we have more than. Oh, just let me know. Send me a data dump, and I'll put them in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's that's one of the things that um, we're trying to accomplish, though, with the textbook affordability team is to actually get a comprehensive list of who's using what OER um, on campus. Yeah, Surprisingly so difficult to to it's gather. The hardest thing in the it's world. very hard. It's one of the hardest parts of my job is that I'm supposed to know who's doing what. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to share. Yeah. So that's you're asking the busiest people to one. stop what they're doing no, and report. You know. Yeah. yeah. But I think this conversation is going to continue. So what we're hoping for is through fall in service there will be a push for this. Many of you have already been doing this for a long time. We really would like to know how we're saving money for students and, and yeah. textbook in textbooks. In different ways. Like what are the affordable learning strategies that are already in fully. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this page is not just for open resources. You'll see that there's um, a lot of library ebook adoptions listed here. There's some copyright material that's free. Um, there's a couple of low cost solutions on there. Um, because, you know, I'm not really doctrinaire about Creative Commons open licenses. I just <coughs> feel like we need to look at affordability from many different angles. Um, and buying a classroom set is a solution that I've yeah. seen work well in some colleges. With adult, with adult. Because yeah. that's the pushback that I've got when I fielded this idea before is that, you know, we're not high school. <laughs> well, 
because the high school, school provides yeah. their books for their right. students. That's right. the point. That's kind of like, <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Yeah, it was a few years ago. Things change. Yeah. So we've got so we've got about five minutes left before our HEC representative comes in, and we can no longer talk about the HEC grant, right? Because otherwise it would disqualify us all because we have an inside person, right? So any last minute questions about the HEC grant? Are you guys going to be here after she presents I'm going to, be to here talk all to day. you? Yeah, we're okay. here all day. Because I would really like to get with you guys and talk about the tap part that I missed because yeah. I was in class. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is absolutely. for HD 100, right? Right. Let's do it. Yeah, 100 okay. and or 101, either one. Okay. I'm Great. perfectly happy to do either one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's a comment open for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To someone who's I can make several applications, yeah. College success. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Or I guess I'm a little confused. So, so somewhere there's a technical room here. Just, yeah, this yeah. person's coming in to talk about yeah. that grant, but we can't talk about it anymore. She's so actually not what value we have for this <laughs> uh, We weren't clear about that, sorry. So in the email that went out, we, she, she is coming here to talk about the um, statewide initiative for OER. So it's like, hey, where's Oregon heading? How is this OER? How is what Mount Hood doing? How is that fitting with what the state's doing? Here's where we're headed as a state, how important it is. Um, but because she is on, I believe she is on the She's committee. on the review committee. She's on the review oh, for the grants. For the grants. Oh, I so technically, okay, that's why. I thought it was secret. Okay. No, no, you're right. Sorry, I gave it. The conflict of interest. Yeah. I was thinking, well, that's not good. So what's after her? Um, then after her is, so we'll, that'll be done at 11.30, exactly. and then starting at noon, um, there's going to be all sorts of festivities in the main mall with ASG. There's going to be free lunch for anybody that shows up with, um, the, you know, they've got vegetarian options and vegan options and omnivore options, and um, there's, Dr. Durr is going to talk in the beginning um, to sort of kick that whole thing off at noon. And then um, we're going to talk at some point early Yeah, I have on. about a 45-minute speech. I would like five, yeah. five minutes, I think. <laughs> I think together, he and I have five I'm minutes to talk about the textbook affordability team and OER in general. Right. Um, right. And there, the ASG is going to honor faculty that have already adopted OER, but I do want to make the point that this is in no way intended to de-emphasize the faculty that have been working towards textbook affordability in other things, right? This is just focusing on OER. So we really appreciate everyone's, you know, attention and concern for textbook affordability for our students. Today is just focusing on the OER stuff. So um, ASG, I know that they've been gathering a list of all the faculty that have been using OER. They've been asking if everybody has replied to them, then then we'll have a list of who's actually doing OER and not hid. Um, but they have some sort of award ceremony set up. Um, for this, and um, they're also going to do uh, an adaptation of the of the game show The Price is Right to sort of highlight and have fun with the exorbitant cost of textbooks. Mm -hmm. I, think textbooks. I think there will also be some discussion because they worked on a survey to, to go out to students about yeah. this, I think that Heather mentioned, and just talking about, um, you know, they've had students also go to the board that have gone to the board this year and said, I spent X amount this term on, on books, or this is what it actually personally means to me. This is how it impacts my education. That's very moving. Yeah, there'll be student testimony. Mm -hmm. And then the two o'clock session back here. Mm -hmm. Two o'clock session is back here for all of those people that were awarded an open Oregon grant. Mm -hmm. So make just to connect with them, make sure Amy's here. Thankfully, we really appreciate that. Just to answer any questions, to touch base, you know, timeline, timetables. So when in doubt, just contact us. These bookmarks have um, the URLs on the back of the, um, the LibGuide that gives you everything you need to get started. Does it um, give us access to outside of Oregon? I'm, I'm curious to see what's happening in Texas, Georgia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does openoregon.org give me access to the whole Well, so, so you can Google that, but it's also we can, I'm, I'm happy to suggest a few. Because, because there may be more materials I want to look at. And oh, it's, and it's happening all over. It's, it's a yeah. global thing, actually. It's global. It so really do you is. have that website? Um, so start, start at that one, and then there's a tab that says Find OER. 
And then there's a, there, there might be too much, it might be info overload on that page. Um, but you'll, you'll have, there are lots of links to other projects, OER projects across the country, and some are beyond the country. And um, I'm just curious to see how many do you want to want extra out there? Yeah. And, and who's using them and have a look at them? That's yeah. What, that's what I'm curious to yeah. see. It's so you not might like want to call somebody up and say, send me a uh, damn copy. Yeah. So yeah. Is there a repository for that? OER Commons. Um, you can um, if you Google OER Commons uh, and go there. It's worth doing the search there. There's also the Open Textbook Network. Um, and then there are other repositories that are on that Find OER tab of the Look Guide. I would also suggest um, Open Washington. Yeah, Open, open Washington is a good open one. Open WA on the dot org. Because yeah. um, they have a list, it's called the Top the Washington 40, which is the and businesses on there, and they have some options that they have already been adopted as well. Okay. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yes, you too.